Hey guys, welcome back. In today's video, we're going to take a look at how we can model a really high detailed bed. And that bed is going to have all the cloth it needs. It's going to have the pillow. It's going to have the blanket and pretty much everything to go with it. Now, I made this uh, video because I had a few comments from the previous one where I made just the pillow. I had people asking me how they can make something more so there we are today we're gonna try and tackle the entire bed with sheet with sheets and everything so before we start one thing you always got to do is find uh yourself some nice or decent uh reference images or sizes for me for this uh for this project i basically went over to google and i typed in bed size now bed sizes come in different shapes uh, and sizes so based on where you where you are those sizes are gonna vary for this one i'm just gonna make a single a uh, small single or a cot so basically it's gonna be a us canada standard or 30 inch by 75 inch or 76 centimeters by 191 centimeters so let's go but if you want to make a different size bed, you can just follow along and it's not going to be anything different. So we're going to start from the beginning. The first thing is I want to make something that's going to be the actual bed or at least a mattress for the bed. So I'm just going to make one single or simple box and I'm going to give it the same parameters as uh, we saw on um, Wikipedia so it's gonna be 70 actually 191 centimeters it's gonna be 76 centimeters uh, in the width and height I'm gonna give it like 20 centimeters this should look right for yeah it should okay I'm going to position it at the middle here there we go and now I just want to make a few more elements to this bed before we export it over to Marvelous Designer and start making all the nice cloth. First thing I want to do is make a stand on which this bed is gonna uh, rest on. So in order to do this, I'm gonna just copy this original piece. So I'm gonna go Control V. I'm gonna make a copy. Make sure it's not an instance. Make sure it's a copy. Click OK. Now. I want to get it upwards for like 50 centimeters but since the base is going to be 50 I want to get this up at 51 so there we go 50 centimeters now I want to get this to be upwards up to like one centimeter uh, to the surface of the top one the way I can do this is I'm going to go ahead on the box I can either drop in an edit poly or convert it to an edible poly but for now i'm gonna go just make it shaded edit poly click on the polygon over here and now since this is 20 i need to get it up to be uh, to be 50 centimeters if you don't know what this is this is what you get when you basically right click on the select and move so 50 and there we go now the top part or the top portion is exactly one centimeter from the bottom portion now what we want to do here is one more time I'm gonna copy this so we had to copy one more time and this time I just want to get some width to this it's really doesn't have to be just like mine I just want to have something that I can use as a bed rest or something I can use as an avatar for Marvel's designer and you'll see what in a minute now before we export over to Marvel's designer I want to make a few more tweaks to the shape we have here so drop in and edit poly on the top one I'm gonna go alt Q so I can isolate it select the edge select all all of these or you can just select one in ring there we go ring and connect make sure you have two connects pinch them away from each other 
something like this. Again, another select ring, connect, something like this. And one more in the middle, ring, connect, something lower like this. And when I toss in the turbo smooth, we get something like this, which is enough for our mattress. Now for the bottom. Again, I'm going to isolate the same idea, we the same trick we did previously. Ring, connect, two segments, pinch them away from each other. Oh, ring, connect, pinch them away from each other. And ring, connect, again, pinch them away. There we go. Turbo smooth. Awesome. And the last thing we have here is the bed rest. We can, add, ah, let's go ahead and do the same thing with it as well. I don't think it's, we're gonna be needing this to be turbo smoothed, but just in case, so we don't have to go back later. Just make sure we get all of the, that. There we go. Another connect, like this. Toss in a turbo smooth. There we go. Now, this is what we want to do. First of, first of all, I'm going to select the bottom portion, this one. And I'm going to go ahead and export, export selected. So I'm going to call it bottom base max. Make sure you're at OBJ. So you're saving out as OBJs. Save. Everything is okay. Normal. Export. Done. Select the middle one and go ahead and export, export selected. Here, call this mm, mattress max. Save. Done. And now select a mattress, hold on control, and select the ba backrest. So with both of them selected, export them as one or as an OBJ. So go mattress backrest max. There we go. Save. So what we've done basically is we've made a template on which we can start building our cloth symmetry uh, simulation from Marvelous Designer. So let's switch over to Marvelous Designer. The only thing I've done here is I've removed the avatar, so uh, clear all avatars, and deleted the uh, default image that comes with it. So, in order to start working here, oh, one thing I forgot. Hmm. Let's see if this is going to be a problem. Before you start exporting from Max. You want to make sure that in the front viewport over here, your bed is facing something like this. See, that was a little screw up on my side. Because depending on how your model is facing while you're in 3ds Max, that's the way, the same way it's going to look like when you import it into Marvel Designer. For example, if I import an OBJ, so go import obj and click on the bottom base max choose centimeters for that studio you click ok you can see that the bed or the bed rest or the original part is imported correctly but here we are seeing it from the front so this can be a little bit of a problem because in it's going to cause some issues with sizing. So mm, I didn't mean for this to go this way, but still, it's a good thing to know how to fix it. So I'm going to re-export these models. So again, export, export selected, just the bottom one, bottom base max. Export, done, select mattress. Mattress max and select both of them again. Export, export selected. 
Metro's backrest. Yes. There we go. Now we should have this issue fixed. Again, then clear all avatar. Import OBJ. Bottom base max. Centimeters for that studio. Okay. And there we go. Now we have it imported into our scene. And here is looking nice. It's looking nice. So now we want to make some kind of a cloth base for this bed. So it's not going to be just like a regular bed. I want to make, uh, make it so it looks like one of those draped beds. So let's go ahead and let me show you how to do this. I'm going to go ahead and make one uh, piece of cloth that's going to stand on the top of this bed. Now, take into account that this side of the bed or this side of the base, it's not going to be visible. But still, I still want to have some cloth geometry on it. So I'm going to use the same uh, measurements like we had from the, for the base. And for the width, I'm going to put 760 because this is in millimeters opposed to working in centimeters and for the height i'm going to go 191 centimeters which is uh, exactly 1910 millimeters so click ok click on the sink all right this works fine I can simply, well, let's try it clockwise, something like this. There we go. As you can see, when I'm changing the orientation or the size on this, uh, on this side of the window, nothing is changing. I have to switch it over here. So I'm going to rotate it for around 90, rotate it around like this. Now lower it down until I get it into position. It's going to be visibly it's going to be visible and easy to set it up as soon as you see it so we're just going to eyeball it a bit there we go okay something like this yeah this should this should be working The reason why I'm trying to get this so in tune or so correctly is because I want to fr freeze this as the base on which I'm going to continue all of my simulation from. There you go. This should, yeah, this should be just fine. So for now, I'm going to right click and I'm going to freeze this portion. So this is what I'm going to do. On the right side, I'm going to control C, control V, and I'm going to make a copy over here. The same copy, get it upwards till about here. And now let's see from the sewing segment, I can try to sew these two together. I can see it's the wrong one. All right. Let me try and get this clockwise one more time clockwise. See if this is working correctly now. Nope. I guess I'm going to have to get this clockwise. Clockwise. And there we go. Now the seam is working correctly. So I'm going to select this thing, copy it one more time over on this side. Make sure it goes down and goes from the other side now. Like this. Again, if you remember from the previous video, if you watched it, like we said, it's important that these connections or the sewing lines are always straight. They're not intersecting each other. So it's something like this. I just need two more portions for this part over here. So the way I can do this is I can either copy one of these or copy the middle one. So I'm going to go ahead and try the middle one here. 
I'll actually, no, I'm gonna still copy one of these guys because they're gonna be the same width. Go ahead counterclockwise. Now make sure that this is gonna be the same size with this. Now click here, hold down shift so you're moving in a right uh, in a straight line till about here. And now move this thing into position over here. And let's try and see if this is gonna stitch over to this side. Nope, it's Oh, well, I just not, uh, there we go. Something like this. One more for this side. And there we go. Now, all of those are stitched together. Now, I'm gonna hold on control, select them all, unfreeze, and now, I'm simply gonna press the space bar or start the simulation button over here and see what happens. There we go, the draping is done. As we can see, it's starting to drape rather nicely. Now, the issue here is, well, quite simply, it's too long. So I'm going to try and get this shorter. So hold down shift while I'm moving this. Uh, on the left and the right side, you can see some purple numbers when I'm moving this. This is for the length in which you're going to shorten this. So 145 millimeters or 14.5 centimeters. Let's try some length. Now. It's a little, I have to go deeper. Let's try with 200 millimeters. Yeah, I, I guess we have to even go even higher. So let's try 280. Mm, yeah, 280 does look to be the right. But actually, you know what? we're going to go ahead and give it another 50. Yeah, something like this. So we're going to do the same thing here. So 280, 330. All right, something like this from this side. Again. There we go. It's more or less the same. Make this another 330 less. And there we go. Space it like this. And we have a nice base for this. Now, what we want to do is weld or sew these parts together as well at the edges so we don't have this gap over here. like this space it again and now it's neatly sewed in or draped together now we can leave it like this but to be honest if we leave it off like this we haven't done pretty much anything that's interesting because it does look just like a box with some extruded mm, polygon on top of it in order to make this more interesting let's try and make this wrinkled the way to make this wrinkled is quite actually simple in Marvel's Designer. All you have to do is make sure that one of the pieces that you want to have wrinkles on is bigger than the piece that it has been sewed on. So click here, hold on shift, let's give it 210 millimeters and this side as well, 210, there we go. Mm, roughly around this okay this works same goes for the top one 214 this here 219 it's okay just want to move it backwards like this again 
move this thing away like this. All right, give these guys some extra width. 190, 25. Yeah, something like this. And now, when we simulate, we should get a different result. We should be getting something interesting now. And we are. Right away, you can see quite a drastic difference between what we had and what we have now. All right. So, as you can see, we still have some space left on the bottom. And I intentionally left it like this. I didn't plan on leaving it, but I just want to show you one more trick you can do. Once you have something like this, in, uh, you might actually run into a problem or a project sometime that it's going to require you to have an additional piece of uh, cloth or additional piece of, um, well, geometry, whatever you want to call it, where it's going to have to be placed on the ground. So what I just did is I copied this part over here. I'm going to put it upwards over here. I'm going to re rotate it like this. And I want to make it so it's smaller. So reduce it for 151. Yeah, that looks fine. And now I'm going to go ahead and suit those two together. Make sure this thing is below it. So again, simulate. All right, it's apparently too long. So control Z, control Z. There we go. I want to get it so it's relatively smaller. Go ahead with something like two, five, 250. There we go. Maybe even this is going to be too high, but still, you're going to try. Again. Yeah, it's, it's better. Still, I think you're gonna make it just a bit smaller. 57, there we go. So, just so it's different from this one, I'm gonna use the same trick I did here, so it has more wrinkles. And I'm gonna make this longer. So 180, 80, zoom it out. Now let it re-simulate. It's going to get some nice draping going on, some nice wrinkles. There we go. You see it like this. Again, copy this on the top part so we can reuse it for the other side so we don't have to make it all over again there we go again and this could be a problem because it's rotated so we're gonna have to rotate it like this There we go, again, no problems, no issues. Let it drape like this. There we go, it's draping. All right, so one more time. I'm going to copy this for this part. 
and clockwise. When you press F, it's going to try and focus on whatever you have selected. So make it smaller, so it's something like this. Of course, it's going to lose the draping. So it's not going to be an issue. It is going to be connected to this part over here like this, so let it drape. Oh, and a good idea would be when you're starting to drape it, make sure it's closer to wherever it's supposed to go, because otherwise it's picking up momentum and it's gonna behave like it's hitting it with force. So just get it so it's closer to it, so we don't get too much of an impact. There we go. I was starting to get some nice looking drapings over here. And one more time, just make sure that these guys are sewed together like this. There we go. So no more issue here. All right, there we go. All right, so basically this is what I want to use for my base. So I'm going to select everything here now. And one of the things that directly controls how much uh, geometry or how much detail is going to go into the simulation of the draping, it's this particle distance pro uh, property. So by default, it's at left at 20. I want to decrease this at 10. So that means it's going to be 10 millimeters between uh, pieces. So I'm going to let it drape for a second now. It's going to need some time to calculate stuff. But when it does, it's going to start moving and give me some very nice subtle details. So press space. There we go. Now it's barely moving but still it's giving off some nice details. So we're gonna stop it right here. And there you go. Now, before I export this, I wanna take a second and make two different materials for this. So over here where it says fabric, click on add and name this fabric, uh, let's call it top base. Uh, give it some color. It doesn't matter which one. This is just so we can better recognize it. So I'll give it the blue one. In the physical properties, preset, go ahead and choose cotton. This is a good preset for cloth. I mean, you have a plethora of different ones, but for this, the cotton will just do fine. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this or just click and drag on the top portions of the base of the base like this there we go and now for the bottom part I want to call this bottom base for the bottom part let's put it a different color again same cotton and you just put it here, here, and there we go. Now with these guys, I want to select all of them and go export OBJ selected. Uh, if you click on the OBJ, it's going to try and export the base or the avatar as well. So just select what you want to export and OBJ selected. And let's call this bottom base Marvel's designer or MD. Save. 
And when we are here, just make sure you don't untick this thing. You want to keep the unified UV coordinates ticked on. So click OK. There we go. It exported it out. So before I st stop this video over here, I want to show you what we can do in 3ds Max. Now here we are back in 3ds Max. We have our scene like this. What we want to do right here is go import, import, and now simply go into where we have it over here. So bottom base MD. Double click. It's gonna ask me if I want to keep my texture coordinates. I want this ticked on. And go import. When it's gonna import, it should be, and yes it is, it's way out of proportion. It's way too big. The easiest way to fix this is right click here on the scale. Make sure you're in uniform scale and offset it at 10%. With this, it's gonna get back into shape and exactly in place. Now, the important thing as you can see right here is since we used this as our base, all the cloth or all the simulated cloth has been placed exactly on top of it. And since this has been placed on the ground, as you can see, the cloth is using the ground as a collision surface. So it's looking nicely draped over here as well. So I would like to cut this video short here because in the next part, we're going to cover how to make a cover for the mattress as well as putting a blanket on top of it and a pillow.